Hello everyone, great to uh, see some familiar faces in and some new faces too, well new to me at least. <laughs> Thanks for uh, stopping by. Hope you're in the mood for some uh, Stream Deck action today. <laughs> We've got uh, lots to uh, lots to come up. I'll go through a full agenda in just a minute. Give some people time to <laughs> time to come in. Greetings from Sweden. Well, greetings from Thailand. Great to see you here. You're not the only one. I shaved my head for this. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> So welcome to the uh, Ecamm Tools and Tech Workshop. Uh, this is a six-day workshop, uh, five of them here on uh, YouTube, and then there'll be a sixth day in uh, in Zoom. And it's talking about really all of the things that go hand in hand with Ecamm. So uh, there's been lots of uh, sessions throughout the year talking about various different aspects of Ecamm. Well, today is focused on, as I say, uh, things that go hand in hand with Ecamm. Namely, uh, the Stream Deck uh, is what we're going to be focused on today. But let's have a look at what we've got coming up over the next uh, next week. Uh, so first of all, uh, today is Stream Deck, Stream Deck Mastery, and I'll go into a bit more detail about that in a moment. Uh, tomorrow, we're looking at audio processing, um, and this is really uh, to get an idea of things like uh, uh, compressors, what they do, what a compressor is, what all the different uh, parameters that you can change are, because I find that uh, the audio equipment that we've got these days with things like the Rodecaster um, is so accessible, and it is, you know, really a sort of mainstream device at this point. Uh, however, that belies really the complexity that lies uh, underneath the hood. So uh, the idea behind uh, day two is to really sort of drill down into uh, what is going on and how we can uh, use that to optimize the sound that we're getting in our live streams and in our productions. Uh, day three is all about audio routing. It's one of the things that I find people book coaching calls with me for is uh, they've got some sort of issue where they can't figure out why the audio is not going where they want it to go when they're using the Rodecaster with things like Zoom uh, and obviously Ecamm and then uh, other different uh, third party software as well. Uh, and trying to get a grip on that is something that I know that a lot of people struggle with. So uh, that's what we'll be focused on in day three. Uh, in day four, we'll be talking about lighting and uh, the basics of lighting, first of all, but then also digging into green screen, because I think that sometimes green screen gets a bit of a bad name uh, because <laughs> some people do it very badly. Um, and so that uh, then just sort of uh, doesn't give a good impression for anybody else that's looking to uh, looking to use it. However, um, there are a few simple steps that you can take uh, to get some uh, really great results with, uh, with green screen, especially with Ecamm's built-in green screen functionality. And it's just about uh, what we need to do uh, in addition to that uh, to give some great results. So that's what we're going to be looking at on day four. Uh, and then day five is all about the supporting apps that you can use with Ecamm. I'm not talking about the big ones, the obvious ones, things like Keynote and Zoom, but more so the small sort of utility style apps things like Camo, Speedify, uh, and a number of other different uh, utility apps that I use all the time uh, when I'm using Ecamm. So that's what day five will be about. Uh, and then day six is a live Q&A session uh, that's on Zoom. So anything that we've covered uh, that we didn't get uh, sort of answered in the chat, it's not quite the same being in a uh, live stream with a uh, chat going as it is just being able to be on a Zoom call and actually ask a question and maybe sort of troubleshoot some uh, issues live that you may have as well. So uh, that is on day six. Now, in order to get access to that Zoom, uh, you do need to uh, register and you also get access to the downloads by registering as well. Uh, so go to ecamtv slash tech uh, and then just enter your details there and you will be able to get the downloads for every day. Uh, you'll see an email come in and then there is a little uh, link there to, uh, to get the download every day and then you'll also get the Zoom link for 
the next Tuesday as well. <laughs> so that's what uh, we're doing with uh, Tools and Tech. And today, as I say, is Stream Deck Mastery. So we're going to start by uh, just taking a very quick look at the Stream Deck models. This isn't intended to be a sort of beginner's guide to Stream Deck by any stretch. So, uh, you know, I won't be going over much of the basics. However, it is worth just sort of introducing uh, certain things and talking about the different models and why you may be interested in them. And then also looking at the Ecamm uh, Stream Deck plugin as well. Again, I won't be going through absolutely everything, uh, but just to sort of uh, familiarize yourself with it. Uh, what we really want to get onto, though, is organizing your Stream Deck and how to get the most out of it. Because really, a lot of people have a Stream Deck, but maybe don't use it to its fullest capacity. And part of the reason behind that for me, as, uh, as far as I can make out from my calls with people, is down to the organization of it. Because uh, we effectively have a sort of blank canvas to work with when it comes to Stream Deck. And so we are, in effect, in control of our own user interface. And so if we don't give enough thought to it, uh, then it actually can be uh, uh, tricky to use uh, and we sort of overcomplicate it for ourselves. So that's what we're going to be looking at a little bit later with the organization side of things. Uh, and then I'll be talking through a number of different multi-action use cases uh, because I find that a lot of the things that I do that aren't just the standard actions uh, from Ecamm, from the Ecamm plugin, are in some way related to multi-actions, so it turns out. So we're talking a lot about those. And then finally, I'll be talking about how to basically use the, the uh, Stream Deck as your mission control when you're doing virtual presentations, be it uh, live productions into uh, YouTube or social platforms, or whether that is into Zoom, into webinars, uh, or even just for recording. But uh, having the Stream Deck as being the hub that sort of pulls multiple different applications together is what we'll be looking at uh, last. I should say, uh, I did mention that there are uh, downloads available if you have signed up, uh, and that looks something like this. So there is this companion uh, PDF that goes along with the uh, uh, the session today, uh, and this has got a lot more information in, and if you need to refer back, uh, you'll find that there. I do also in here go through uh, all of the different actions for uh, the Ecamm Stream Deck plugin as well and give a little bit of more of a description. So any that I don't cover today, um, you will find that they are fully uh, described in this document. So let's start off then with uh, taking a quick look at the uh, Stream Deck models. I think it is worth just uh, refreshing our memories in case you uh, are unfamiliar, or maybe you are just new to Ecamm, new to Stream Deck. Uh, it's definitely worth taking a look at these. So essentially, what is a Stream Deck? Well, a Stream Deck is more or less just an input device for your computer. So I have a number of Stream Decks on my desk. I've got uh, three <laughs> here and I've got two on the floor. Uh, so I'll talk about those ones in a moment. Uh, but here is uh, what it looks like. It is a, uh, an input device, much like a keyboard. Uh, the difference is that the uh, actual keys themselves are miniature screens. So you can update the, uh, the keys with different icons so that when you press the button, it is going to do something. Uh, and you can have a nice little icon there to show you what the button is doing. So uh, there is a 15 key Stream Deck called the Stream Deck Mark II, which replaced the original Stream Deck, which was also 15 key. Uh, there is another one which is 32 key. That is the Stream Deck XL. That's actually the one that I use. Uh, and then there is also the Stream Deck Mini, which has six keys. So all of these are uh, similar in the fact that they uh, all do exactly the same thing. The only differentiator between them, more or less, is the fact that uh, they've got different numbers of keys. Uh, there is another Stream Deck, though, called the Stream Deck Plus, uh, which looks like this. This has eight keys, but then it also has some dials on it. And I'll talk about how you can use those specifically with Ecamm uh, a little bit later as well. And it also has a touch screen. So uh, this allows you to control things where you might need some sort of fine adjustment, things like the uh, audio levels in Ecamm, for example, and various other things. Um, and then finally, there is the Stream Deck pedal, um, which is effectively just three large buttons uh, with a central pedal and then a pedal on either side as well. Uh, you can do all of the same things with the pedal as you can with the other buttons, except obviously uh, you don't have any little icons on there and you have to just sort of know what you're pressing. But I'll talk about how you can know what you're uh, pressing, what the actions are a little bit later as well. I say that's the last one. There is actually one more, which is the Stream Deck mobile app. And this has had a big update just recently. Before it used to be 
uh, only 15 keys, uh, whereas now with the update, uh, you can have up to, um, I think, 64, if my memory serves me right. Um, so if you are on an iPad, you can really have a large number of uh, keys on there. And what you can also do is you can set it up in split screen mode so you can have two instances of it running at the same time uh, and potentially be controlling uh, two devices. But anyway, those are the different uh, models. So I just wanted to uh, quickly run through those. Uh, as I say, the uh, XL, the Mini, and the um, uh, Mark II are all the same, just different numbers of uh, keys. Uh, the one that is uh, really uh, a big difference here is the one with the, uh, the dials on, which is the Stream Deck Plus. So uh, there, those are the uh, the different models. I want to now take a look at uh, the Ecamm plugin itself for Stream Deck. I've talked about how uh, you know you can basically program these to do uh, all sorts of different things. So let's just take a look now at uh, how you go about doing that. So uh, the interface for the Stream Deck looks uh, like this. This is the app. Again, I'm not going to go through too much uh, beginners type stuff here, but I'll just start with a very brief introduction. Um, and you can see here that we've got a number of different uh, squares on the uh, screen here, and these represent the keys on the Stream Deck. So here I've got a Stream Deck XL, which is completely blank, uh, and that actually exactly matches uh, the screen that we've got here. So with the Ecamm Live plugin, you can do pretty much anything that you can do in Ecamm Live. So uh, we can use it for switching scenes, we can use it for toggling on our overlays, uh, we can use it for starting and stopping our recording and things like that, um, and a whole lot more. In fact, of all of the different applications that have got plugins for Stream Deck, uh, I do think that Ecamm has just got one of the most complete um, plugins of all. <laughs> the list of uh, actions you can perform is, uh, is pretty extensive there. Uh, and all you need to do is just drag something on. So let's say I want to switch to a different scene in Ecamm, uh, then I could use this run scene button here. I can just drag it on there and then I can come in here uh, to change the scene. So here we've got a list of all of our scenes. This is just live updating from the Ecamm scenes list. So I can just choose any one of these uh, scenes here. So let me just sl slip back to this uh, main view, for example. Um, and now if I was to press the button on my Stream Deck, uh, then it is going to switch back to that main scene again. So uh, that's how simply this works. It's just literally drag and drop, put things where you want them. Uh, other things that you may be interested in just quickly is things like the overlays. So if you've got an overlay that you want to toggle on and off, uh, then you can come down here. You'll see that there are uh, controls for show and hide overlay. Uh, and once again, it's pulling in the list of all of your different things. The last uh, comment I put up on screen was from uh, David. So if I just press this button here, uh, it'll pop that back up on the screen again. Uh, so it's just live updating here with all of the different um, uh, overlays that I happen to have on the uh, in Ecamm right now. So uh, that's how easy it is to sort of set this up. Uh, and then the beauty of this is that once you've got it set up the way that you want it, uh, you can have a nice layout, something like this. So this is my uh, current uh, stream deck that I'm using right now for this stream. So I've got various different scenes going on down here. Um, I prefer to make icons for all of my different things. Some people prefer to use text on them. Uh, I like to just have these little pictograms so that I know exactly what it is by looking at it without having to uh, read any text. <laughs> so I've got a number of different scenes and I've uh, I created these e icons myself in, uh, in Keynote actually. Uh, they are available from my uh, Take One Tech store as well, but uh, I find that Keynote's really easy to just sort of throw these uh, these kind of things together. Um, and so here I've got my different scenes, my uh, main scene, this one here, my top-down camera. Uh, these are different sort of camera angles, sort of over-the-shoulder shot, this one here, uh, and then back to this one here, which is sharing this particular portion of my screen. So uh, having this sort of familiar notation to me uh, uh, seems to work well. So whatever profile of Ecamm I'm in, whatever I'm doing, I always have these uh, familiar little um, uh, icons so I know which uh, which scene I want to go to. Uh, and then I've got various other different things on here as well. I won't go through all of these right now, though, for the time being. What I'll do is I'll just switch back to my uh, other stream deck. And uh, just want to highlight, having said, I'm not going to go through this entire list of uh, actions. I want to highlight a few that maybe aren't so obvious, because I know that there are plenty of you in here just looking down the list who are you know, already uh, somewhat Stream Deck power users in any case. Uh, so I just thought it would be useful to uh, highlight some of the ones that maybe uh, you weren't quite so uh, so aware of. 
So first of all, uh, we've got a number here related to comments. Um, so here you've got uh, add last comment. So if I was to just add that button up uh, and then just add the last comment to the screen, this is going to be a bit of a lucky dip. <laughs> so if I just press this, it's going to literally, oh, look, it's one from the Ecamm team. <laughs> so uh, if you uh, press that button, it's going to just pop up the last uh, comment that was posted onto the screen. I personally, I don't tend to use that one because I tend to be looking down through the list of comments and want to sort of manually uh, place one rather than just take, you know, the, the, the most recent comment to come in. So I don't tend to use that one myself. However, uh, the hide last comment, uh, that means that if I've gone down the list of comments uh, in uh, in the Ecamm chat, so let me just uh, pop one here. Um, and this is from uh, Tamara Harris, and I might as well answer this. <laughs> Where can I find the PDF to accompany the this presentation? If you click the link to uh, register, um, then you'll get an email that should have uh, the uh, link to download within the email and uh, check your spam and so on if uh, if you don't see it um, and otherwise <laughs> follow up with the team but anyway this is just to show that we've got a comment on the screen but now if I press this button here on my stream deck uh, to hide that comment uh, then it's going to hide that last, last comment so I find that that one is quite useful because I will then select the uh, comment that I want from the list but then I'll actually hide it with the stream deck button uh, this one here though is really useful this post comment uh, because this allows you to pre-populate a comment that you might want to post in your stream and I'll talk about this a little bit more when I come to talk about multi actions but if I type in a message here hi this is a test <laughs> uh, like that um, and then I press that button now on my stream deck so I'm just going to come over to my stream deck and uh, press that button that we've just created uh, what you'll see is it will actually just post that uh, message. And there we go. It's just gone into the chat. Uh, what that means, though, is if you've got a live stream where you've got various different calls to action uh, throughout the live stream and you want to be posting links to maybe it's check out your website, check out your offer or whatever it happens to be, um, then you can create those comments up, uh, up front in advance um, and just have a list of these comments uh, with all of your messages. And then as you go through your live stream, if you want to mention you know, booking a call or whatever it happens to be, you can just press the button and it will post the message. You can get a little bit more clever with these uh, as we'll see a little bit later on when we start looking at multi-actions. Another one that is a relatively recent addition to the uh, Stream Deck plugin for Ecamm is the add marker button. Now this is really useful uh, for marking your uh, timestamps if you are uploading your videos to YouTube. Um, so if you're not familiar, when you want to put those little markers on your timeline uh, to the videos you upload for YouTube, um, then uh, you simply just add in text into your YouTube description that has the timestamp. So 0.00, .00 being the beginning, uh, 1.0. 3.0 being 1 minute 30. Um, and so you have a series of those uh, little text stamps and then you write the description next to it of um, what that timestamp is for. And that's how uh, YouTube creates those uh, time code things in the, uh, in the timeline. Well, there is a um, marker function here. Uh, and if I just drag this in, and this, so this is all still within the Ecamm, uh, uh, Ecamm plugin, if I were to leave that just as it is there, uh, completely blank, um, and as I go through, if I was to press the add marker button here, um, what that's doing is it's going to create a text file. So in Ecamm's, uh, the folder where you have your recordings, um, if you were using the add marker feature, um, then you would also, as well as your recording, you would get a separate .txt text file. Uh, and every time you press this marker button, it's going to create a uh, just a timestamp. So you're going to end up with a list of times. So that might be useful in itself. However, what you can do is go uh, a bit further than that because you can actually type in the marker text uh, for that you want to associate with that particular timestamp. So if we were going through maybe had uh, multiple different sections in our video, uh, let's just call it section one for the sake of argument, section one, uh, and then I could duplicate this. So I'll just copy and then I'll paste it again here. And then this one I'll change to section two. Uh, so now I could go through and be pressing these markers 
for section one, for section two. And then what I get is I get a text file out of the other side uh, that actually has, as well as the timestamp, it also has those words that I've written just down there. So that means that you could actually go through and at the same time as you're recording or live streaming, you could be actually marking off those different uh, sections as you go through to save you having to go back and find out where your timestamps were a little bit later. Another use case for that, though, is uh, imagine if you're on a live stream uh, and you drop some little pearl of wisdom <laughs> or you're expecting to uh, that you want to go back and repurpose. Um, then what you can do is you could just have a timestamp, which is, you know, go back and check this out or something like that, you know, something to mark it for yourself so that as you're going through, you can press this button multiple times and then you're just going to know where to go back to to go and find those little gems that you want to chop up into short form content. So that marker feature is a really great addition that, uh, as I say, was added uh, relatively uh, recently. A couple of other notable ones here that I find really useful. Um, this one here, show and hide controls. What that does is it shows and hides the controls on your Ecamm main window. So if I just go into my uh, demo mode for a second, just have to uh, switch back uh, to here. Um, so here I am I'm in live demo mode. If I press the button to show and hide the controls, uh, what it does is it moves these things off the screen. So especially when you're designing a, a layout uh, or new scenes or whatever, sometimes these things can get in the way. So I find that's really useful just to be able to have that as a button so that I can just get back to, uh, 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 get that out of the way whilst I am uh, designing that layout. So uh, that one there is just the show and hide controls. So again, those are you know not really the main things that you can do with the uh, the, the Ecamm plugin. And as I say, it's uh, I'm not going to go through all of the uh, the basics right now. I want to get onto some of the uh, the other stuff. But what I do want to just mention, though, is the Stream Deck Plus, because we talked about uh, how that is slightly different to those other Stream Decks um, because it's got these little dials on it. So let's take a look at how, uh, how that actually looks in the interface. So if I switch over to my Stream Deck Plus over here, and I'm just going to go to a blank uh, page on here um, because the way that this works is we've got the uh, the buttons here, which are just the regular push buttons. But then you've got this uh, touch screen and then you've got this area for the dials. So over on the right hand side, as well as having the different uh, regular key commands, so you've got all the same ones as on the regular stream decks. If I go over to the dials section, you can see that we've got this Ecamm uh, live section here. Uh, and we've got a couple of things. So we've got the input level. So with this one, uh, when you uh, select it, you can choose whichever inputs you want to be able to control. So whether it's the primary or secondary mic uh, or any of your up to 10 guests, um, sound effects, interview, uh, the overall interview mode, uh, levels, Skype, system audio, movie, and so on. So you can select which one of those things you want to be able to control with that dial. And then now if I move that dial, uh, what you'll see is that it is going to turn down my volume. So I'm actually reducing my volume as I'm uh, doing that. So I'll just move that as I put my volume down to zero. There we go. Um, and the other thing that you can do with that is you can also use it for um, scene selection as well. So you can drag this on. If you are doing something where you sort of increment through var uh, various different scenes. So for me, the way that I work with Ecamm is I'll have a specific scene, you know, just like I've been doing right now. I've got this scene here, which is uh, this particular layout. I've got this scene, which is back to here. I've got my uh, top down view and so on. Um, well, I like to just be able to press a button and know that I'm getting exactly to that particular scene. However, um, if people are doing large productions, I know that uh, some people favor the idea of having a almost like a complete run of show in Ecamm. So there may even be duplicate scenes, you know, where you go to your main shot, over to another uh, maybe two up shot, then back to your main shot again. And so actually duplicating those out so that you've just got one long run of show, much like you'd have in a slide deck. Uh, well, in that case, what you can do is you can use the dial to actually sort of increment through those. So you're, as you're turning the dial, you're going from one scene to the next. Um, and you can do the same with overlays as well. So clicking on the overlay here, uh, dial here, um, then if you are in a, uh, a sort of grouping of overlays, you can uh, see, sort of sequence through those as well. Um, and then the same with the sound as well. However, there are only four dials. So you may think, well, that's going to get pretty full up, especially if you are adding in, you know, want to add in all of your different sound levels. 
what you can also do in the Stream Deck Plus, though, is you can create what they call smart uh, stacks or dial stacks, uh, dial stacks, I should say. Uh, so if I create a dial stack, uh, the, the interface of this is uh, looks familiar if you are uh, used to using multi-actions and things like that in Stream Deck. Uh, what this allows you to do is add multiple different actions onto that one dial. So I can come in here and add a, a uh, input level. So let's say we want this to be the primary mic, uh, but then I can add another input level. Uh, maybe this one we want to be the, uh, the movie. I'll add another one on here. And this one can be the system audio, for example. So there we've got three different things associated with this particular dial. Uh, and now what happens is, uh, although there is uh, only one dial, if I press the front of the dial, what you'll see is it actually cycles through those different things. So uh, by, uh, by doing that, I've now got mic level. If I press the button, it changes to movie level. I can adjust that, press the button again, and it goes to system. So just showing you what that looks like on the device itself. As I press the button in, it's cycling through to those different things. So what I normally do is over here in my, uh, my sort of regular thing, I've got my Ecamm system level and all my uh, regular Ecamm levels in here, but then all of the interview guests I have on this one. Uh, and again, you can just press that to sort of cycle between them. So that is how the, uh, the Stream Deck Plus works with Ecamm. So I thought that was just worth uh, pointing out, although it's a relatively uh, sort of easy uh, interface to, uh, to work with. I just thought it was worth uh, point, uh, pointing that out. Uh, before we uh, move on, let me just double check to see if there's any uh, questions related to this before I just sort of steam ahead. <laughs> um, uh, does uh, Blackmagic have an 8M plugin for Stream Deck? I'm not sure, to be honest. I know that a lot of people use a Companion uh, to, uh, to control 8M, uh, and so I don't know if there's a, a native one. I don't think there is, actually. I think you have to use uh, the Companion app, and I won't go down the Companion rabbit hole, but basically Companion is an app that uh, takes over the Stream Deck, and you use it in place of the regular Stream Deck app. So uh, that's, how, uh, that's, <laughs> that's what you'd do with that. Um, hey, Tommy, great to see you. How does one program the Stream Deck key that allows you to engage the key function in an app that is not currently active on the computer? Uh, there's a couple of ways to do that, actually, Tommy. Uh, the first one would be to use a multi-action. So what uh, Tommy is talking about there is when you want to use just a regular uh, keyboard shortcut for a particular app, um, but the app isn't frontmost. So let's say, for example, uh, I'm not that you would necessarily want to set up a Stream Deck app to print your Word document, um, but uh, let's say you wanted to uh, use that uh, Command P, um, and that was going to you know print or Control P, uh, Command P in uh, in that particular app. Um, if that app wasn't frontmost, if you were in a different app, then obviously pressing that uh, key would actually apply that keyboard shortcut in the current most active app. So uh, the question then is, how do you get it to actually activate in an app that is in the background? So uh, there's one way which is kind of a little hack here, which is if I go back to the Stream Deck, I'll just quickly show you that. Uh, Stream Deck XL2. And then let me come back to this view. So the first way to do that would be um, to create a multi-action. And the first thing you're going to do is if I create multi-action, the first thing to do would be to use the open command to open a specific app. So if I go to um, uh, system and you're going to go to open uh, the app. So let's just say that the app is uh, Word for the sake of argument. <laughs> I'm going to search for it here. Um, uh, that was probably a terrible app because loads of those come up in my search. <laughs> Here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is actually open Microsoft Word. Now, if Word is already open, what it does is it just brings it to the front. So um, then I'm going to go and add that key. So this is just simulating. We want to do that to Command P, for example. <laughs> Uh, I should have really chosen another Ecamm uh, command, but actually Ecamm's got so many things built in. I'm not sure what there is left that uh, you would require a hotkey for, uh, but let me just put that in there. So that multi-action there is basically opening Word and then it's pressing that hotkey. Um, so that would achieve what you're looking to do there, Tommy, because it would effectively bring the app to the front and then it would press the button. The only thing is you may not actually want the app to be brought to the front because you might be in the middle of doing something else. So then uh, the other way and the way that I always do it is using an app called Keyboard Maestro. And Keyboard Maestro is basically the ultimate in productivity 
apps. Um, and what that allows you to do is that allows you to uh, do one of two things, actually. Either send a keystroke to any app, so that does exactly what you're, you're asking. It would send the keystroke to the uh, app in the background. Um, or the other thing you can have it do is rather than even set up keyboard shortcuts for apps, uh, it can uh, send a, uh, it can basically effectively click in any menu item for any app, even if it's not in the, uh, even if it's not the frontmost app. So that would be the way to do that. Uh, and then there is a keyboard maestro plugin for um, Stream Deck, which is uh, called KM Link. Um, and that allows you to uh, basically just trigger that thing. So uh, there is a keyboard maestro plugin, which works the other way, but then there's one called uh, KM Link as well, which is in here somewhere. Um, and so if I just drag this button on here, uh, this gives me access to all of my keyboard maestro uh, macros here in that list there. So uh, to answer your question, Tommy, that is how uh, I would uh, do that. <laughs> Um, so do we have to create the overlay for the comments? Uh, no, in Ecamm, when you uh, just click on any comment in your comment list, uh, like I've just done for you there, um, then it would just pop up on screen. So let me just quickly show you how that looks in uh, live demo mode uh, over here. So here I've got my list of uh, comments. Uh, and then here, if I just click on your comment, it will just appear up there. Uh, what you can then do is you can click on the little pencil icon uh, and go and adjust all of the, uh, the text and so on and ch change all of the, uh, the formatting. So uh, yeah, that's how you, uh, how you do that. Um, does the marker uh, auto add the timestamp or just an empty file? Um, so there will be no, no file at all if you haven't pressed the marker, but as soon as you press the marker just once, um, then it will create the file. And if you've left the marker button empty, um, so just coming back over to uh, this one here, if you've left the marker file uh, empty, so there's no marker text in there, it will just be blank. Uh, but as soon as you put any text in there, then it will add the actual text in as well. Um, so, uh, so yes, that's how that works. Um, and uh, just to show you as well, by the way, if you ever wonder why uh, why Paul is always saying put a cue in front of your uh, uh, your question, uh, the reason is because in Ecamm there is a search box in the chat. So if I just look at the chat, I can see the full chat like this. Uh, but if I now just search for Q colon, uh, then I just get a nice list of all of the questions. So uh, that's just to explain why uh, why Paul always says that. It really does make things a lot uh, a lot easier. <laughs> Um, so one more, I presume there is a, pr prove, uh, a preferred way to advance my PowerPoint presentation uh, while in Ecamm. There certainly is, and I will be coming to that a little bit later. There is a uh, PowerPoint plugin for Stream Deck uh, so that you can, uh, you can do that. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. I will be coming to that. Um, so next up then, what I want to talk about is the organization of Stream Deck because uh, one question that I get uh, asked all the time is what do we do when we filled the buttons up? And uh, although you may, <laughs> you may be forgiven for thinking that my solution is just to buy more Stream Decks, uh, I've got a few of them on my desk. Um, actually, there are a number of different ways that you can organize uh, the content that is on your Stream Deck. So uh, first of all, you can see here that I've got my 32 keys. So you can imagine if I built this all out and uh, filled these all up, in fact, as I had shown you that I had on that, that other Stream Deck, um, then what can we do from there? Well, first of all, uh, there are pages. So if you fill up one page, you can kind of spill over onto another one. So if I click on the little plus, now we're on page two. Uh, and then there's a little button just down in the bottom corner here. Um, so it will add that page forward and backward button. So now I can go back to this page and I can go forward to that page. Uh, you can have up to 10 pages um, per profile. So the profiles are the next thing I'll talk about, but you can just click on here and add more and more pages. So that's one way that you can sort of fill things up. The way that I uh, organize my uh, Stream Deck, though, is that I use uh, what are called profiles and have a profile for each specific use case. So at the moment, you can see that up here I'm in demo. However, there are a number of other different profiles on here. Uh, and if I switch to uh, one of those other ones, uh, and I'm just going to switch from here because I've already got a few sort of pre-populated. Uh, so what you'll find is that when you install Ecamm or when you install your Stream Deck, uh, or if you've got a Stream Deck, when you install Ecamm, 
it will install an Ecamm profile for you. And the Ecamm profile looks something like this. Now, this is uh, useful in the fact that it's got a lot, lot of stuff already put in there. However, um, it may be that it's a bit um, uh, off-putting potentially if you are not using all of these things. So, uh, for example, this is very much set up uh, for one particular way of using Ecamm, where you have the scene source as being a specific camera or a screen share or something like that. Um, and you're gonna add in interview guests to the left or right hand side and various different things like that, or you wanna just solo them. So that's what a lot of these buttons are for here. Um, however, I don't use Ecamm in that way. I use different scenes um, and switch between the scenes that way. So in actual fact, you know, for me, those ones there would be redundant. So although it's great to have this profile as a starting point, uh, you don't have to start with this at all. You can create your own profile. So this is, as I say, the built-in Ecamm profile. Uh, we were just in this demo one, but then you can create lots of other different profiles. Um, and you simply do that by just clicking the little arrow and then of course it's disappearing off the bottom of the screen <laughs> but down at the bottom of the screen you'll see there's an option to create new profile and so if I do that it gives me a nice fresh start here to start with but when you are working with Stream Deck uh, it might be a bit uh, frustrating to be coming up and opening the app all the time to switch profiles so what I've done is I created a home profile um, and so I've got a profile in here that's just called home um, and then what I recommend is that you then use this as think of it like the sort of home screen on your on your phone um, and you're going to then use this to link out to all of your other profiles so uh, there is an option in the navigation section here in stream deck to uh, switch profile so i can drag this button on here um, and then we can change the profile uh, from next profile to uh, let's say demo which is that one i was just working in and then we can just give this a title in here as well um, so this one now will um, if i just put the title on so we can see it uh, this will now switch us if i press that button it will switch us back to that demo profile that we're in uh, and then what we can do is we can also use a switch profile button on here and then with this one we can actually switch back to our home profile so now pressing that button will take us back to our home take it back to this one will take us back to our, our demo so i basically created that one home profile uh, and then that links through to all of my other different ones and that makes it easy to sort of navigate back and forth between the different use cases that i have for stream deck at the moment this still all looks a little bit of a mess uh, because i've just sort of randomly thrown some things on there uh, but i do highly recommend you know taking a little, little bit of time to uh, find some icons that work for you and uh, having a sort of consistent look uh, across all of your different um uh, different profiles and certainly having things that you use a lot uh, be in the in the same place so for example if i come over to the ecamm profile that i'm on right now here you see this button down here this is my sort of main front view on ecamm uh, and then if i press back to this one it's going to take me back here again um, so this button here is always in the same place i've got lots of different profiles in the uh, stream deck for my different use cases of ecamm because i'm this is one particular profile for this that I'm doing right now, the tools and tech. I've got another one that I use on my own channel, Take One Tech. I've got another profile that I'll use specifically for, uh, you know, calls on Zoom, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but it's useful to uh, be very consistent in the placement of all of these things so that I always know that if I just sort of reach down uh, and uh, touch this bottom left-hand corner button here, then that's always going to take me back to that main uh, main view. So uh, just having a little bit of uh, giving a bit of thought to that and being consistent about it is uh, is really useful. So um, that well, let me just come back to this one. I've just lost my uh, my stream deck there for a moment. <laughs> so that is the way that I organize things with profile, having a home profile and switching from uh, and switching in and out of them uh, like that. There is another way that you can uh, have more buttons, which is you know what this is all about. It's about optimizing the space we've got, and that is using folders. Now, it is uh, sort of logical to think that uh, you know why not just create everything in a hierarchical structure uh, with folders, just as you would folders on a desktop. And that is how I sort of first started when I got my Stream Deck was uh, organizing things in that way. Um, however, I think profiles is a better way to do it because uh, you can actually just sort of link from any 
profile to any other profile using those uh, keys. And in fact, when we look a little bit later using multiple stream decks, there is another advantage to using the profiles. Nevertheless, you can always create a folder by right clicking uh, and saying create folder in here. It's also in the navigation section as well. Uh, so you can create a folder from there. And now if you click into that one uh, or press the button, then you've effectively got another single page here. So folders can't have multiple pages. They can only have one, uh, one page, um, but that does give you a way to sort of open up uh, some extra actions if you, uh, if you need to. Um, so uh, just quickly whilst we're on this, because this is a, a <laughs> Always a good point, and it's on my list to cover, so I might as well cover it right now. Uh, yeah, there is a way to back up profiles, and I highly recommend uh, you do it. Uh, so if you come into the preferences, which uh, just to show you where that is, this little cog icon up here, um, then if you come into the, uh, you've got general devices, accounts, uh, profiles. Um, so right down at the bottom here, uh, you'll see there is an option to, uh, it's just behind your comment, let me move that. <laughs> uh, here, if I just click this little button, now it's not letting me click, of course it's not. One second, let me get that back up again. Uh, <laughs> it was just there and then now it's not. Uh, there is a little uh, icon here that allows you to click. Uh, there we go, I've got it back. Uh, backup all. So create a backup that will back up all of your different profiles. Incidentally, if you've created a profile and you want to send it to somebody else, maybe, uh, or maybe you want to create digital products, I've got a number of icon packs in my uh, store, takeonetech.io slash store. Um, and uh, those have just all been created on my stream deck. Uh, and then you can also just right click on any of these and you can export a single profile as well. So that's for more if you want to just sort of create a single copy of a single profile and send it to somebody else or for, you know, for sale or to keep it somewhere else, <laughs> uh, to send it to another device maybe. Uh, but the backup all is going to create a complete back backup. So I highly recommend you do that on a, uh, on a regular basis. Um, while we are in here, actually, there's one thing that I'll just mention, which comes up an awful lot uh, on calls as well. Uh, if you ever find that your Stream Deck is randomly switching back out of the profile that you're in to another profile, they've got this really useful, <laughs> in inverted commas, feature, uh, whereby you can uh, switch the... Um, profile based on the application that you're in. Um, so uh, that can be helpful if you want to, you know, always go into your Excel profile when you're in Excel, for example, um, or, you know, whatever it happens to be. Um, or your Ecamm profile with Ecamm, but uh, you often might end up with multiple Ecamm profiles. Um, but there is also this other thing, though, that it means uh, make this my default profile. And that means that if ever you're in an application that doesn't have a profile associated with it, then it will just automatically switch to that one. And this one can really catch people out because if any of your profiles has got this little icon next to it, um, then that is the thing that is causing your Stream Deck to sort of switch when you're not expecting it. So I recommend that you just disable this thing here uh, so that you don't have a default profile if you are going to be creating uh, a number of different uh, profiles. And uh, I guess most Ecamm users probably will be doing that. But uh, it took me two months uh, to <laughs> figure that out um, when I first started using it. So I definitely disable that one. Um, let me just come down here. And um, do you still uh, need a Stream Deck if you are using a um, Blackmagic Studio switcher and cameras? If you're using something else for switching, then uh, you might well have that covered. But I will say that the Stream Deck, uh, whilst I bought it for switching scenes and you know using it with the Ecamm, it's only once I got it that I realized just what a powerhouse of a, a productivity tool it is far and above you know just using it for switching scenes or for live streaming and live recording it is such a productivity tool it's it's quite uh, quite unbelievable i cover that all incidentally in my stream deck masterclass which goes into the sort of productivity side of it and everything like that as well um <laughs> good grief i've just realized uh, the time and uh, how much more i've got to get through <laughs> i could talk about stream deck for weeks it is just i've uh, when I uh, started my uh, my channel, Take One Tech, um, it was uh, supposed to be about just the general sort of tech tools that I use on my computer. Um, and it was when I 
got the tools to make those videos with, namely Ecamm and Stream Deck, that I just fell in love with both of them and started making all of my content pretty much about either Ecamm or Stream Deck. So I'm a, a big fan of, uh, of both. <laughs> uh, let me just uh, say then uh, about organizing. Yeah, if you start off with uh, profiles and have your home profile, um, then that is going to stand you in good stead to make sure that uh, you have got you know room to sort of grow and you don't just find that all of the buttons are filled up and now uh, now what do we do? Uh, and so do split those down into uh, into different use cases as well. Um, so, you know, if I'm doing something from a productivity point of view in a particular app, then I'll have a dedicated profile for that. In each of my Ecamm profiles, they've all got their own uh, related uh, Stream Deck profile too. Um, so moving <laughs> swiftly on, <laughs> um, I'll probably cut a few of these demos short and uh, maybe save some of them for the, uh, the uh, workshop on the sixth day. But I do want to talk about using multi-actions because there are quite a few things that I do with the Stream Deck and with Ecamm specifically uh, that I realize is, um, you know, something that is related to uh, using uh, multi-actions. Um, and a multi-action basically allows you with a single press of a button to perform, as you may guess, multiple different actions. So if I just right click in here, there is this option to create multi-action. And that looks a little bit like that stack that I showed you with the Stream Deck Plus. Here, what you can do is you can add in uh, multiple different actions and then have those sort of all work together uh, when you press that one button. So what are a few uh, examples of that? Well, I've talked about how, um, you know, having this home profile that you then switch into different profiles on your Stream Deck, depending on what you're doing. Um, and I showed you that uh, you can do that by uh, using this switch profile button. Well, imagine if you did the two things together. So instead of just switching profile on your Stream Deck, uh, maybe you're going to come in here and go to uh, this Ecamm Live profile. Uh, but then also in Ecamm Live, we have profiles for your different shows. Uh, so you may want to switch that at the same time. So that is indeed what I do. If I come down the list here, you've also got switch profile. Uh, and if I click in here, this is just going to pull in that list of all of my profiles. So I've got a number of different profiles in Ecamm here, quite a long list. <laughs> uh, and so if I just clicked in this button, um, then when I would uh, press this button uh, on my Stream Deck, this would do two things. It would switch the Stream Deck profile and also switch Ecamm profile. So it means that when you're going through between these different use cases, you can have it auto switching between each one uh, in that respect. What you may also want to do, though, is perhaps you also have uh, different apps that you've got open. Uh, then you can uh, come into the options here to um, open a particular app, for example. Uh, and you could have this all chained together with all of the different apps that you want to have open uh, at any given time. Uh, you could list those all down there so that with one button, it switches your Ecamm profile, it switches your Stream Deck profile, and opens up all of the different things that you want to have on your screen. Uh, one of the apps that I'm going to be talking about on day five uh, is called Moom, and that is for laying out your desktop. Um, so if you are wanting to uh, sort of speed up the process of getting set up for your live stream, uh, then Moom is a great app to do that with uh, because you can save these snapshots of exactly where the apps are on your screen. Um, and then you can trigger that with a Stream Deck shortcut um, so that then it will just sort of not only open everything, but it will also position them exactly where they need to be as well. So uh, that's a really... Uh, a uh, good use case for a multi-action to just be basically getting yourself set up for your uh, live stream, for your live productions, whatever it happens to be. Um, just going through a few other little uh, buttons here uh, that are also multi-actions. So my channel is called Take One Tech, and the reason is I make all of my videos in one take with no edits, thanks to Ecamm, of course. And if I just come back to uh, uh, my main Stream Deck, I've got this button here because although it's called Take One Tech, more accurately, it should be just called One Take Tech because sometimes it's not the first take. Usually it is the uh, maybe the second or third because uh, it's the very first little hook to the video uh, that often doesn't flow so naturally for me. I'm all right once, once I get going, uh, but that little beginning, the, the little part of the beginning, you know, this video is for you, if X, Y, and Z, that kind of thing, uh, is the bit that doesn't necessarily come uh, naturally to me. So what I often find is I'll start it and then think, you know what, I need to just start this again. Uh, so what I did was I created this multi-action which basically just does three things. Um, it presses the, uh, the record or finish button. Um, it then waits for a period of time, which is two seconds, 
arbitrary. <laughs> um, and then it presses the uh, record button again, because if you uh, know when you start recording or when you finish recording on Ecamm, uh, there is that little pop-up that comes up on the screen um, that basically says, do you want to go and see the recording? Do you want to upload it to YouTube? All of those kind of things. Um, well, normally people might go and just sort of click the button to dismiss that. Uh, but if you press the record button again on the Stream Deck, it will actually dismiss that uh, little pop-up. So what I did was then create this little sequence here that basically does that for me. So it means that uh, if I uh, start my recording, pressing the record button, I've got to stay well away from that right now, otherwise it'll end the stream. Uh, but if I was to press this record button and then think, you know what, I need to start over, uh, then I just press this little button and it stops the recording, waits a couple of seconds, and then uh, presses the button again to get it ready to, uh, to, to start again. It might seem like such a trivial little thing, like, well, surely you can just press the button twice, but somehow <laughs> those little things uh, sort of add up up to uh, you know when it makes it uh, easier to work with another thing where you would use a uh, multi-action similar to that when it comes to timings um, people often ask about stinger transitions and that's something that moves across the screen in this sort of way so you've got something that comes over the screen and then whilst that's over the screen you want to switch to a different scene so it's something to just mark that transition from one scene to another um, so that little transition there, that uh, thing there was just an animation that's going across the screen. Um, but we want to do the switching of the camera in the background. Um, so if I just come over to my, uh, my demo mode again, I'll just quickly show you how this works. Um, wrong, wrong, uh, <laughs> wrong window, let me come over to this one. This might help. Here we go, this is the right one. So what that was is this little video, and if I just sort of play it here, uh, the trick with this is you want to have a transition that basically at some point is completely covering the screen. So if I just sort of scrub this one across, you see how it goes across the screen and at some point it's completely covering up everything on the screen and then as it plays, it wipes over to the other side. And the trick is what you need to do is have it so that when it's covering up the screen, you just sneakily switch to a different scene. Um, so then as it works its way back over, you've switched the scene. So as it cuts, covers up you want it to be like that and then you switch scene in the background uh, and then when it moves over then you've changed to a different scene so that's effectively how a stinger transition works so the way that we program that is quite simple if i uh, just it takes a little bit of uh, understanding the sort of timing uh, but if i come over to my uh, stream deck 2 back over here um, what we're going to do is use a multi-action again, so create a multi-action, uh, and we're going to basically play that transition, and we're going to wait for a period of time until it's covered the screen, and then we're going to switch to a different scene. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to play animation. So this is in Ecamm. We're going to play the animation, and I'm going to select this uh, stinger, which is the name of that animated overlay. And then what we want to do is we want to have a little pause. So there is actually a delay option in here. So with these uh, multi-actions, you'll see that there is a delay and we need to enter the time for that delay. Now, I think if my memory serves, it's around 400 milliseconds. And if I come back up here, we want to switch to a different scene. So uh, run scene and I'm just gonna switch back to my main scene. So hopefully when I press this button, we'll see with my, uh, how my timing is. And the button is, which one, this one? Let me just move this one out of the way. In fact, is it that one? Let me just double check. <laughs> yes, it is. Right, so I'm gonna press that button now and we'll see what happens. So it's playing that and then it switched the scene in the background. So this is a question that comes up all the time in the Ecamm group is how do we do these uh, stinger transitions where it goes from one scene to another? So if I just go back to my other scene uh, and then I'll just press that button again, uh, what it's gonna do is play the animation and then in the background, it switched the scene. So that is how you use multi-actions uh, to uh, use those stinger transitions. Another great way, though, to use multi-actions is um, for these calls to action that you might want to have in your live streams. 
So for example, um, if I was to want to promote <laughs> my Tech One Tech Academy, for example, I've got a little stinger here, which, oh, sorry, not a little stinger, a little animation, which is looks something like this. So this is the uh, Take One Tech Academy, takeonetech.io slash academy. That it gives you access to all of my courses and uh, it, lots of other learning res resources as well. We have uh, weekly Q and A's and so on. Um, so what I do in my live streams is I've actually got a uh, combination of playing that particular thing there so if I just come back to uh, this one uh, over here and I'll share my screen again so I've got this uh, this little multi action and it basically does two things it posts that comment up oh, sorry it uh, plays that animation uh, but it also posts a comment so if I was to press that button now what you'd see is that as I press it uh, not only does that animation come up on screen but there's also a comment gets posted into the uh, the chat as well uh, that's the theory at least so it should have oh it's because I've got the Q colon on so that comment should have just uh, just popped in uh, and incidentally since uh, I am talking about it uh, you can get 25% off uh, with the code ecam tech for all of my courses and also the uh, take one tech Academy uh, and that is through uh, September so 25% uh, off with ecam tech at uh, take one tech.io and you'll find a list of all the courses that includes the stream deck masterclass the Rocaster masterclass and of course the ecam masterclass too and uh, various other ones so uh, that is how you would use a multi-action though as a uh, as a way to uh, introduce a call to action and in fact you could add another step in there as well uh, we talked about how the um uh, you can add in the uh, the timestamps. So you could also maybe have a timestamp if you were going to be using these stingers maybe as a way of uh, all these calls to action as a way to sort of mark, you know, where you are in your live stream then what you could do is you could come over here and you could also just drop in that marker. So if I wanted to do that, I could just drop a marker in and then I could give that a name of, uh, you know, Academy CTA. The uh, So you could just drop that in there. So that would be another way that you can use the uh, markers is to add in those uh, those calls to action. Uh, there's another one that I want to talk about, which is uh, not technically a multi-action, although it does require a multiple press. It's kind of like the opposite of a multi-action. A multi-action is one touch and it does multiple different things. Uh, there are instances where you may want to actually have a bit of a security. So, for example, uh, you might not want to end a live stream by accident <laughs> because we've all done that. Um, I did that just on my last live stream last week, as it happens. <laughs> anyway, but uh, let me come back to this one and I'll show you. Uh, if you want to be extra careful and uh, not inadvertently end your live stream so here you've got go live and finish uh, you might be a bit concerned too if I share the screen it might help uh, this go live and finish that means that if I press that button now it's going to end the live stream so one way to uh, do that though is if you did want to have that sort of extra little bit of security uh, what you could do is you could create a folder so right click and create a folder and then you can change the icon on that to make it the, you know, the finish button. Um, but then you have to actually double click in that and then you put the go live button inside that folder in that exact same place. So it's a way to use a folder um, that basically gives you that double press to end the live stream. If you're paranoid about inadvertently ending the stream, uh, then if we just came and changed this icon, um, and I haven't really talked about icons, but uh, I make all my icon packs in um, uh, in Keynote. So I've got a whole series of Ecamm icons. You can find those on my uh, my store here. Uh, but let's say this record button, uh, we could just add that to the, uh, it really should be an end button, but I can add that to the folder. Uh, so it still looks like, you know, the record or the end button. Uh, but then I have to actually click into it to click the finish button so it's almost the op the opposite of a multi-action it's actually making it a uh, an extra step that you have to do uh, just so that we don't inadvertently uh, end our stream um so that is uh, uh where are we folders and the um Last thing that I want to talk about then is uh, for in terms of the multi-actions uh, comes back to this idea of using multiple stream decks. So as I say, I've got um, three stream decks on the desk and two on the floor. Um, so the way that I use this is I've sort of come away from using a home profile on any one of the Stream Decks, and I actually use the Stream Deck XL, oh, sorry, the Stream Deck Plus, uh, this one here. 
Um, this is the one that I use kind of like as my home because there's only eight buttons on it anyway. Uh, so I use it predominantly for the uh, for the dials. Uh, but what that means is, you know, commonly used profiles uh, that I want to have set up on my other stream decks uh, can be done with just the push of a button on here. And what I've done is I've actually set up multi actions for these buttons so that instead of switching profile on just one device, it's actually switching all of those other devices together. Uh, and the way that that works is uh, I've shown you how you've got the different profile buttons here. Where is it? Switch profile on the Stream Deck. Let me just uh, not confuse myself. <laughs> uh, the navigation button here, you've got the switch profile button. And here you've got the uh, the thing where we switched to a different profile. So this is how I showed you how to set up a home profile profile and then switch to other things. Um, but here you've also got the device. So you can actually choose any one of your other devices, which means that you can have one device that is switching profiles uh, on another. So uh, the way that that works is if you have a look here, I've now got uh, my Stream Deck over here, but I can actually change what is on this Stream Deck by pressing this one. So me pressing the button on this one is now changing what is on this uh, device over here. So, uh, and then with multi-actions, you can basically just obviously couple that all together. So then you can have it that you press one button here and it actually changes all of the other stream decks. So uh, that's the way that I, uh, I work with that. Uh, the other thing that I've done as well is the pedals are really useful um, uh, for controlling all sorts of things. Um, however, the obvious thing about them is there is no buttons on it, uh, or sorry, there is no screen on it to tell you what, uh, what is on there uh, for you to know which uh, particular um, profile that you are in. Um, so what I've done is I've set up these different profiles on my secondary stream deck uh, that show me, you know, exactly what the pro the pedals are doing. So this is the one when I'm working in Kajabi. This is my live stream. This is my Amazon live. This is when I'm on Zoom calls for Take One Tech recording. If I'm in Premiere Pro, which is very rarely these days because I've stopped uh, making my podcast of late. Uh, Photoshop, uh, Discord. So I've got all these different use cases for my pedals and I've created these different profiles for them. Uh, and then I'm actually switching the profiles from my secondary stream deck. So um, the, uh, the way that you can see, though, what exactly is on the pedals is there is a little option here um, to display these things. So I've got two sets of pedals, one for <laughs> left foot and right foot, obviously. Um, and these little floating things here uh, show me what actions are associated with those, uh, those pedals at the, any given time. So I can actually see you know, which profile I happen to be in uh, because those are floating on the screen. Now, I think that there is a slight little bug that was introduced in one of the recent versions of uh, uh, Stream Deck, which is previously, if I go to any one of my pedals, um, you had this option here. Where is it gone? Um, in Stream Deck somewhere uh, that showed you this one. It's called the action bar. Uh, and that is what this thing is. This is an action bar that shows you what is on that particular uh, Stream Deck. Now, it used to be that that action was available even if you were in one of your other Stream Decks, like here. You'll notice that the action bar has disappeared. Well, for me, it seems pointless to have a pedal, one of three pedals, be the thing to trigger the action bar. I want to be able to trigger it with uh, an action on one of my main stream decks. Uh, so what you need to do is, uh, and as I say, it did used to be available in here um, for, you know, to use on any stream deck. But it has now just seems to be, it does now seem that it's only uh, visible when you are in a pedal. So the trick here is that you actually drag the action bar onto one of your pedals, uh, and then you just right click and copy that, uh, and then you go over and paste that onto one of your stream decks, so uh, your other regular stream deck. So I actually have this, if I go to one of my other pages, I've actually got this button here that toggles those on and off, this one with a little picture of a pedal with a question mark. So pressing that just brings up the things on screen so that I can see what, uh, uh, what I'm using with, um, you know, what, what, what actions are on the, uh, the pedals. Um, so, uh, so that is just another point about uh, multi actions. Let me just see where I'm up to with the uh, the comments uh, and see if I've just missed any uh, questions. Um, 
Can I access my profiles from two computers in my house? I have a stream deck at each one. Uh, the th so I mentioned earlier about backing up. You can back up and export them and import them to your other uh, computer. You can do that, but you can't necessarily um, sort of <laughs> you can't control one with the other. You kind of you kind of can do something like that, but uh, you can't control one with the uh, the other. Uh, what you can do though is the Stream Deck mobile app, um, you can link that to uh, two computers because you can run two instances, you know, on a, uh, an iPad, how you can bring up one app and then you can bring up another app next to it. Uh, and you can have, you know, two Safari apps next to each other. You can actually run two iPad apps uh, to uh, instances of the Stream Deck app side by side. So you can actually control two computers from one uh, one iPad, but uh, I don't think that's what you're talking about. And uh, no, you can't sort of control one from the other necessarily. Um, there is a way that you can do that using Keyboard Maestro, but that's uh, for another day. <laughs> um, um, is there no other first class supported way to do stingers in Ecamm? Uh, there isn't anything that does the switch in the background. You can certainly have the animations that go across the, the front, uh, but no, there currently isn't a way to do it where you can do that sort of little transition uh, sneakily switch scene in the background whilst the stinger is over the top. So no, I know that some other software potentially has that built in, but this, uh, it, it isn't built into to this. So that, it's the multi-action uh, is the way to do that with the stingers. Um, can stingers be created in Canva? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they can. All you need to do is have the animation and then you need to be able to export it with a transparent background, which I'm pretty sure you can do in Canva. Uh, I made that one that you saw. Uh, this one was just made in Keynote uh, and it's so simple. It was just literally a uh, you know some shapes on this side of the screen and then have them move across the screen with a you know simple uh, animation, um, and then just export that as a uh, as a movie file with transparent background. So uh, all you need to do is make sure that at some point the entire screen is covered with some sort of solid color or com uh, uh, a combination of colors, uh, so it's all covered uh, because it's at that point when you're going to do your little sneaky switch of scenes in the background. <laughs> um, is that a real set behind you? Uh, or it is inf indeed a, uh, a real set. So yes, I'm out of my basement, Tommy, um, for the first eight months. <laughs> um, then uh, yeah, I was in my basement. But no, this is uh, this one is real this time. <laughs> um, how do you engage SD pedal quietly. To be honest with you, I know that some people have said that they they're noisy, and I've got uh, somebody who uh, who is a podcaster, and uh, they they've got a really sensitive mic, and it, they you know the 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 pedal noises were coming through. I mean, now if I press mine, I'm pressing on them, and I don't know if that came through at all. I think my noise gate basically just cuts it off, so um, you know it's you, you're not hearing it from from. Uh, for that reason so uh yeah the i haven't ever had any issue with the uh, the sound of them but i know that some people uh said that they might be a bit sort of clunky but um for me it's they've been fine so <laughs> i don't think there is any way of doing that you can actually change the springs in them uh to make it uh, you know softer to press or harder to to push down on um but yeah no other way apart from that um do uh but if you have a stream deck do you still have to pay for the stream deck the the stream deck mobile always used to be there was a free trial of it and then it was uh you know three dollars a month or something like that um thereafter um whereas now what they've done is they made it free with six buttons and then if you want to open up more than that uh, then you pay for it so actually if you're just looking for a few different actions um then uh, yeah i think it's six is is free and then it's $24 or something like that. I forget exactly how much uh, thereafter. So that's how that works. Um, for the noise gate, I'm using the Rodecaster. I won't go into that too much today, though, because that is exactly what we're going to be talking about tomorrow with uh, audio processing. Um, what do I use for the pedals? So my pedals right now, I'm using it for basically switching scenes. So here um, I've got, uh, this is what is on my pedals. I've got these two screen share scenes here. Uh, that's the one that's currently active. 
Um, that is my main front on camera. Uh, I've got my top down camera. And then this one is for my pro mouse, which is this thing I'm using to zoom. So you can see actually when I press the button, it shows that it's pressed and I'm also zoomed in on it. Um, and then this one is to uh, hide the, uh, the last comment uh, off the screen. So that's, uh, that's what that's for. Um, so what is the size of my teleprompter? So uh, the teleprompter is uh, 12 and a half, uh, 12 and a half uh, inch. And then the one down here is 16 inch. So when I'm on a uh, Zoom call, then I'll have my, uh, my speaker view in the top and then I'll have the gallery view down there. And that means that when I'm on coaching calls, then I can see the person that I'm on the coaching call with in there. And then their screen share, if they want to share something, would come down there as well. Obviously for Ecamm, you can see that I've got my main Ecamm output there and the Ecamm controls down here. And then on this monitor is where I'm sharing all of the different uh, parts of the screen. Um, one uh, one more thing then before uh, <laughs> before I completely run out of time um, is uh, the sort of next thing that I wanted to talk about, which is this concept of a digital stage and how the Stream Deck can become your mission control. Because if you are using Ecamm and you no doubt love it, um, but you haven't got a Stream Deck, um, then you're really sort of missing out on the 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 way that this can sort of transform how you work with Ecamm, first of all, just being able to you know, press these buttons and switch effortlessly between scenes. But there's something else that happens though when you want to start doing uh, more things with Ecamm rather than just you know, creating videos or live streaming. Because in the Ecamm Advanced series, which I did earlier on this year, um, we talked all about the ways that you can use it for virtual conferences, for virtual presentations into uh, Zoom, uh, into Teams, Obviously, bringing people in from interview mode as well, uh, potentially creating you know a situation where you've got your guest speakers coming in through interview mode into Ecamm, and then having that feed into your Zoom call. Um, and then there's all the other things then that you might want to have going on around that. So, for example, this uh, presentation that I've been doing uh, today. Um, with some other little added animations and graphics and the little things that were popping up on screen. Uh, that's all done with Keynote. So I've got actually Keynote is running on a, uh, a separate uh, window just down here. So my Keynote is running here. Uh, that is then feeding into Ecamm. Uh, and that is what's doing a lot of those uh, those animations that aren't just simply possible at the moment in, uh, in Ecamm. So um, bringing on those sort of bullet points and things like that, I still make all of that myself in Keynote uh, and then want to bring that into Ecamm. Ecamm. But then you can be in a situation where you've got Ecamm running and then you've got Keynote running and then maybe you've got Zoom running. Maybe you've got some other programs running that you want to demonstrate as well. Uh, and you want to do things like, you know, highlighting the screen and so on a bit like I did with the um, uh, the little pro mouse thing that I showed you there. Maybe you want to do some writing on screen. So some sort of telestration, maybe drawing little diagrams and things like that. You want to be able to do that using uh, video pencil for the iPad and have that come in, but then you want to be able to uh, easily sort of get rid of that and put it on again. Uh, so all of those different things, as soon as you want to do, start doing things that are slightly more technical uh, outside of just Ecamm, uh, you can then feel uh, or you can then be in a situation where you've got these different moving parts. And what the Stream Deck is really amazing at is actually unifying everything because instead of feeling like you're working with multiple different applications, uh, you can actually just feel like you've just got this one control device right in front of you or maybe several <laughs> right in front of you. But the point is everything is all in the same place. You know where it is. So uh, I always know that, you know, I've got my Stream Decks in front of me here. And if I press this button, it's going to do this. If I press my uh, pedal, it's going to do something else. Uh, and so it becomes uh, almost like an extension of me when I'm using them. Uh, and that is something that is really quite magical when it happens because what then occurs is you find that when you're in meetings, when you're in presentations, when you're delivering webinars or whatever it happens to be, um, suddenly, you know, all of the tech just melts into the background um, and you're just there able to deliver the content, deliver the value that you've got to deliver without having to actually really worry too much about how it's all happening. <laughs> um, and so that is the real beauty of, uh, of Stream Deck 
working with ECAM uh, to do all of this. And I've been on a number of calls with people where um, they've had this sort of frustration of wanting to use ECAM for Zoom and for their webinars, but maybe not feeling that um, not feeling confident to manage these different apps at the same time. Um, and it's only when they've really sort of embraced Stream Deck and brought that into the picture um, that, as I say, it's just sort of merged everything together um, to make this one seamless device that controls all of these things. So I just wanted to talk then with that in mind about the uh, the way that you can kind of set up your Stream Deck for things like virtual calls, virtual presentations. And this comes back to the question uh, from earlier on about uh, PowerPoint. Forgive me, I can't just see uh, who it is. Oh, there we go, James. Uh, this, uh, this is to answer your question, really. Uh, be it PowerPoint or be it Keynote, uh, there are plugins for both of those. So if I just come over to here, I'll just quickly show you um, that we have got somewhere down here um, plugins plugins here for there we go for PowerPoint. So you've got um, play, pause, next slide, previous slide, and so on. Uh, so you can just drag and drop those onto your uh, thing. So if I just come back to my Stream Deck Mark II, oh sorry, second Stream Deck, I should say. Um, and uh, you've also got controls for Zoom in here as well. Let me just come back to the demo. So here we can go to uh, in next slide, first slide, all of these kind of things here. Um, if I come down here, you'll also see there is a Zoom plugin. Uh, now the Zoom plugin is somewhat limited in that it can uh, toggle the mute, the video, the share screen, uh, and leave meeting and start a recording and so on. Uh, but there's also this other option here, which is custom shortcut. Now this is actually coming back to uh, Tommy's question from earlier on, uh, and I'll pull all of this together in a moment, <laughs> if I digress slightly, but uh, Tommy was asking about how you can uh, trigger a shortcut in an application if the application isn't the frontmost application. And one where that is highly likely to be happening is in Zoom because you're potentially going to be giving a presentation or something like that. So maybe your, uh, you know, your presentation software is going to be at the front, but you still want to be able to control Zoom in the background. Well, this particular plugin here has got this thing called a custom shortcut, and that does the thing of passing the shortcut through to Zoom, uh, regardless of if Zoom is the app active application. And the way that that works, if I just get these things out of the way, is you actually just uh, add this on as a custom command here. Um, and then you come into where it says uh, shortcut and you type in the keyboard shortcut and then that will apply it to Zoom even if Zoom isn't the most active application. Now what I did is I actually went through and I just completed all of those shortcuts. So I have a Zoom profile, which instead of only having these few here, um, it's actually got all of the keyboard shortcuts associated with, uh, with Zoom. Um, so that's how I control my Zoom meetings. But there's some there that maybe, you know, I don't need for every Zoom meeting. So uh, coming back to this idea of organization and profiles, although I've got this full profile for all of my uh, Zoom controls there. Uh, and by the way, you can get this from my store. Uh, so takeonetech.io slash store. You'll find that there is uh, Stream Deck icons on there. Uh, you can also get my uh, Stream Deck Masterclass from there as well. Um, so there is the Zoom pack, the Ecamm pack, uh, and some others for YouTube and uh, keynote and so on. Um, but anyway, so that's what I uh, did with my Zoom controls there. Um, so then what I've done is for different use cases, if I'm running a webinar, for example, or a, you know, a large group meeting, uh, then I might want a lot of these things, you know, being able to, uh, if it's a group call where there's actual participants in it, then I might want to be able to mute everybody or request everyone to unmute and things like that. Um, however, if I'm just on a coaching call, then I'm not going to need all of those uh, different functions. So I've created different profiles in Ecamm for all of these different functions. So here you can see that I've got this one that's got some Ecamm scenes because obviously I don't use Zoom without Ecamm. <laughs> so this is for some uh, just select scenes that I'm going to use on my Zoom calls. Uh, then here I've got my uh, controls here for just the actual Zoom side of things itself. Uh, and then these ones here, uh, just coming back to the uh, point from earlier, these are actually my uh, keynote uh, slide control. So if I'm doing a presentation, then I can just page forwards and backwards through the presentation from here. Incidentally, uh, this one just up here um, is my uh, sort of default icon for my Moom control. So uh, Moom is the app for laying out different windows. So I have this that when I press this button, it puts all of my, uh, my Zoom windows in the right place, puts Ecamm in the right place, 
puts all of those other things in the right place. So that's kind of like my overall kind of get set up for the meeting uh, sort of button. Uh, and then I have this one, which is for video pencil. So that's the thing that allows me to, uh, to write on the screen. Uh, and that's a great iPad app. If you haven't checked it out from Michael Forrest, a member of the Ecamm uh, community, um, but here I can see my Ecamm output on the screen uh, and then I can also just annotate on the screen uh, and I can crucially see exactly where I'm drawing. So if I want to give myself a comedy moustache, <laughs> I can do it. Uh, but more accurately, uh, you know, I can use it for drawing diagrams and things like that. And the point is you can actually see where the output is. There used to be a few different ways of doing this and faking it uh, in terms of, uh, you know, using green screen and things like that on the iPad. Uh, but Michael just did a great job of knocking it out of the park where you can now just see exactly where you're writing. But uh, that is a button that I will always have on my screen there is this one to uh, to activate that uh, that that thing there so um that is the uh, the real power of stream Deck. then is it becomes this one thing that is uh, sort of unifying uh, everything together and and giving you that sort of mission uh, control um so the app john is called uh, video pencil and it's uh, from a, a chap called Michael Forrest, who's in the Ecamm community as well. Uh, I've got a full tutorial about it on my, uh, on my uh, channel as well, on Take One Tech. Uh, but yeah, definitely, uh, definitely check that out. It's a, it's a game changer for meetings and just for, you know, whether it is just, you know, annotating, if I want to just sort of show you exactly, you know, where I'm looking on the thing or, you know, <laughs> uh, you can see how you've got that sort of accuracy that you don't have uh, with other, uh, other methods of doing this. So uh, yeah, it's a great, uh, a great app. Um, incidentally, this whole concept of the digital stage, I do just want to mention this as well. I've mentioned my Take One Tech Academy where you get access to all of my, uh, my courses and all of my different trainings. Uh, so here you've got the uh, Discord Beginner's Guide, YouTube Beginner's Guide, some others in the pipeline there. Uh, these masterclasses are already out, so the Stream Deck, Roadcaster, and so on. Uh, so that is the, uh, the Take One Tech Academy. I'll leave a link to that in the, uh, in the description that was uh, posted earlier. Um, but so there's also monthly workshops here where we focus in on the, uh, the sort of real uh, minutia of uh, some of these things as well, rather than just sort of broad topics uh, and then accelerator programs in there. But uh, the reason why I'm just mentioning this again is because this concept of the digital stage is also something that I'm gonna be covering at this event in October, the digital stage revolution. Because for me, discovering Ecamm and Stream Deck and all of the things that went along that was really a revelation um, and uh, allowed me to do things that I didn't think were possible as a sort of solopreneur um, uh, from a production point of view. So uh, this is in October in just over 30 days time. Uh, and that uh, offer code that I mentioned um, of uh, Ecamm Tech, you can apply that to this as well. So you can get that 20% off this. Uh, and this is really talking about this thing that I'm uh, talking about today, really, the uh, whole uh, idea of the digital stage and how uh, the tech can really make that uh, uh, make that happen for you. So uh, day one is all about laying the foundations and building this digital stage, talking about the tools and tech that go into it. Uh, day two is about mastering the tech, so understanding how these things, which we're doing a lot of that over this week in any case. Um, but then the uh, day three is about the implementation and this idea of, uh, you know, once you... Uh, once you get to the point where it becomes second nature, then this magical thing happens, which allows you to just basically deliver the value, whatever it is that you're trying to do. Because most people, whether they are coaches, teachers, um, or in business, if you're doing a sales call or whatever it is, uh, you've got some value to deliver. And uh, so often the tech just gets in the way. And so I'm all about trying to remove that friction so that the tech gets out of the way and allows people to deliver their true value. So definitely check that out um, as well. And uh, don't forget that you do get that uh, discount as well for all of the uh, wonderful Ecamm fam. Uh, and that is available through, uh, through September. Let me just check in with uh, any uh, calls as well. Any, <laughs> any other comments here? Um, uh, Bluetooth page turner be used with Stream Deck as a pedal. So, uh, so there is a, um, yeah, there is a pedal that is um, not a Stream Deck pedal. 
um, I guess this is what one of them, the Coda Stomp, where which is a Bluetooth page turner. Um, I used to use another pedal before the Stream Deck pedal came out, which was actually a USB uh, set of pedals. Um, there is an app called uh, Keyboard Maestro, which can take inputs from any other, uh, you know, any any device that you've got. Um, and so, whilst you can't link it with Stream Deck itself, so to send a signal to Stream Deck to get Stream Deck to do anything, um, what you can do is you can use it with Ecamm. So uh, in Keyboard Maestro, you can uh, basically trigger any action within any application, which means that you can then trigger, you know, scene switching and things like that. Uh, and you can just use Keyboard Maestro, <coughs> Keyboard Maestro as the bridge between your pedal and the uh, and the app. So. One thing to note with the Stream Deck pedal is uh, it can technically be used uh, as a standalone device. So if you're not using the regular Stream Deck, the pedal is a standalone thing. It's not actually controlling the main Stream Deck or the main Stream Deck, the other Stream Decks. Um, it is a standalone device in itself. So, um, but yeah, hope that answers your question, David. Um, uh, Gregor got one Stream Deck pedal, but it's not making the switch every time. I'd say eight times out of 10, it works. Oh, that's a shame. Um, uh, yeah, maybe loosening the springs, maybe if it's, uh, if it's not making full connection. I will tell you one issue that I had with my Stream Deck pedal, which I think was due to a power surge, is I kind of unplugged it and hot plugged it, which shouldn't really matter with uh, USB devices. Um, but I did have um, two Stream Deck pedals at the same time, pretty much, uh, die on me. Uh, but Elgato replaced them, you know, with no hassle whatsoever. Um, but that's just something to be aware of if you've got the pedals. Uh, from now on, I'm always going to power down my docks and power down my computer before unplugging them because I've kind of got it into my head that that's what, uh, that's what killed them. <laughs> so I will just uh, mention that. But, apart for, but in terms of it not actually registering, um, I've not had that issue. But yeah, it could be the potentially be the, uh, the springs. It, being the kind of person I am, I did strip my pedals down <laughs> to find out how they worked, because that's what I do with everything. I rip them apart to find out. Um, there is no physical switches in the Stream Deck pedals. It is literally just a proximity contact switch. So uh, it's when the, uh, the one, one face of this plate comes close to another that it triggers. So there isn't actually a physical switch, even though you hear a sort of clunking. Um, that's down to the... Uh, um, uh, to the spring. So uh, one thing that is just coming to mind is it could be something inside if it's got some uh, dust or something like that in. But um, yeah, apart from that, if you are having issues, though, reach out to Elgato because their customer service, of, of whenever I've had to deal with them, has been absolutely fantastic. Um, Tommy, sometimes when I use multifunction, the window pops up stating the cam is already open. Um, what am I doing with my... Uh, I'm not sure, actually... If that is the um, if that is the multifunction to open an app that's already open, I'm not too sure. Uh, let me think. It's <laughs> I can't quite get my head around what my what that is in reference to. Um, so I'm not sure. Let me see. Is that the same question, or has that got any more information? I'm not sure about that one, Tommy. Um, I'll give it some thought. <laughs> Reach out to me and I'll, we'll sort it out. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, is there, are there any differences, uh, preferences going live on YouTube? Um, are there any differences or preferences going live on YouTube um, or LinkedIn? Um, there are a few different differences, like in terms of, you know, latency and things like that. Another difference with LinkedIn is at the moment, uh, the comments from LinkedIn don't come directly into Ecamm. So there's a, the API hasn't been opened up fully. It's, it's not Ecamm, it's, it's LinkedIn, not giving people access to that. Um, so if you do want to get comments coming in from LinkedIn, the only way at the moment, I believe, is uh, to actually do it through Restream and Restream will feed the comments into uh, Ecamm. Um, so that's just one specific uh, thing that comes to mind about those two. Apart from that, the actual process of streaming is the same. Uh, you can obviously, I say obviously, you can multi-stream from Ecamm to multiple different platforms. Uh, the only thing to, uh, to note about that is that you just need to make sure that your stream size is set to the sort of lowest common denominator of uh, where you are streaming to for that. 
Um, let me see, how have I, if I mixed, missed any here. With multiple Stream Deck devices and Stream Deck pedals, how are you connecting those wires uh, to one computer? So I, it's just a dock. Um, make sure you're using a powered dock. They'll, all manufacturers will say, don't use, you know, dock. Our device is intended to be connected directly to a computer, but uh, it works just fine. So <laughs> um, I'm using a CalDigit Element Hub is what I'm using that all my Stream Decks go into that and then go into the, uh, the main computer. Uh, I think I've answered that one. Let me just see if I've missed any other questions. Oh, I see. A window, a window will pop up stating that Ecamm app is already open. Oh, I don't know, actually. Um, I'll have to think about that, Tommy, because I've got one that I use with Ecamm. And actually, the, it's the one multi-action that I do use with Ecamm. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's the one that I didn't actually mention. Uh, let me just come back to here and I'll just quickly show you because I don't get that issue. Um, so it's this one. I have this if I want to send my um, Ecamm to, a, uh, to my teleprompter as the output. So in Ecamm, you've got your main window, but you can also have a video monitor out. So at the moment, I've got Ecamm down here. Normally, I wouldn't actually have it here, but I've got it there so that when I do live demo mode, you can see all of my Ecamm interface. But I also have Ecamm in my teleprompter there, and that is uh, using um, this one here. In fact, it isn't actually a multi-action. Oh, no, it isn't a multi-action because I ended up using Keyboard Maestro instead. Um, I'm not sure, Tommy. I'll have to think about that, and I'll do a little trial myself and, uh, <laughs> and try and figure out why that uh, might be uh, happening. Uh, whoops, a daisy. No, I don't want to do that. I almost just banned somebody in uh, the chat there. Um, well, with that, at uh, 90 minutes, <laughs> I, uh, I probably could go on for uh, hours, but I know that there is uh, something else coming up. <laughs> Are Blackmagic cameras compatible with Ecamm? Yeah, any cameras, when you, if you're bringing them in, uh, depending on how you're bringing them in, if you're uh, bringing them in using a capture card, um, then, uh, then any camera is compatible. If you're using a Blackmagic uh, deck link, um, then that's actually a great way to bring multiple cameras into Ecamm because you can connect multiple cameras into your de uh, uh, deck link quad eight uh, quad 4k <laughs> for the card um, so that enables you to plug all of your uh, cameras into that and then have them coming into uh, to ecam over a single uh, over into your computer over a single cable so um, yeah but technically yeah any camera that you can get into your computer then technically is uh, uh, addressable or or can come into uh, into ecam um, so with that said, <laughs> then uh, I could literally go on for ages about this. Uh, there's some stuff there that I didn't quite cover, but we can certainly touch on it in the, uh, the session on next week, on next Tuesday, on Zoom as well. But uh, before that, there's plenty more coming up for the rest of the workshop. So tomorrow we're going to be talking about audio processing uh, fundamentals, and uh, that is going to be going into, as I say, uh, looking at the Rodecaster and taking through the different settings on the Rodecaster for uh, things like the noise gate, which I alluded to earlier on as well, uh, the noise gate, compressor, uh, de-esser, and so on, uh, kind of trying to just demystify those. And uh, a lot of people understand, you know, kind of what they're doing, but then when they drill into actually making those changes to those uh, particular uh, processes, not quite understanding necessarily what all those different things do, like, uh, you know, what is the compression ratio, the hysteresis, for example, uh, in the uh, in the noise gate, uh, the attack, the release. So it's going to be going through and trying to uh, sort of demystify um, all of those. So that's what's uh, coming up tomorrow. If you haven't already registered, then definitely go ahead and uh, still register. You can register anytime uh, and you'll get those uh, downloads, as I mentioned as well. The download for today has got lots more about all of those different kinds of Ecamm actions. Uh, so uh, you'll get all of those as well and some other advice there on setting up some of the things I talked about and some of the things that I didn't quite get around to as well. So uh, there will be uh, downloads for every day as well. So you can uh, definitely uh, sign up and be sure to pick those up. So if there are no further questions, then I shall uh, <laughs> I shall get off the airways so that we make room for uh, Doc and Katie, who are coming a little bit later with the flow, I think. So I haven't been looking at all the comments. I've just been looking at all the questions. I don't know if I've missed any other questions um, along the way because I've just been looking at the Q colons. <laughs> so I'll see if there is any that I can see just uh, as we come up here. And... 
I think uh, I think we're probably good. Okie dokie, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you found that useful. And if you do want to reach out, by the way, you can find a link to my website down in the description, takeonetech.io. There you'll find all of the, uh, the ways that you can contact me. You'll find out more about my courses and so on. And don't forget that uh, I do have that special offer, 25% off all of my courses. And that includes that event coming up in uh, October, the Digital Stage Revolution. And one of the things I should mention about that finally is that uh, when you sign up to that event, you do also get six months access to the Academy as well. That's all for me today, though, and I'll see you uh, next time. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.